All right, this is the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. It's uh, a really nice game for the whole entire family. Nice storyline. Um, this game started out in 2011, I think, with its um, when Binding of Isaac: Wrath of the Lamb came out. First Binding of Isaac, later the um, add-on Wrath of the Lamb by Edmund McMillan. It was actually originally meant to be a game that was supposed to not do well at all but then it kind of did and blew up and later on in 2014 Edmund McMillan decided to um, do a remake of it with lots more items and actually just recently this year The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth came out which is another add-on to the game which added about 100 items a new ending some stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know the game, this is a game about Isaac living with his mother. Ooh, nice. Living with his mother in a house together. They just mind their own business, and all of a sudden, mom, uh, she watches Christian broadcast on the television, and she starts hearing a voice from God that tells her to go kill her son and sacrifice him. And um, last moment, last minute, he finds a trap door to the basement and escapes. And the basement is really not a lot more friendly either. Uh, either way, I I start out by resetting a bunch, you might have noticed. It's part of the run to reset for a good starting item. The game is procedurally randomly generated. You get random dungeons, random items. So basically you want to try and find a good start right off the bat. And this one I found here is actually one of the best in the entire game. Uh, which is Ipecac. Gives me explosive shots, a lot of damage up. Um, and allows me to abuse a lot of other stuff, for example, the donation machine in the shop. Um, the donation machine you can fill up over the course of like numerous runs, the, the coins, the coin count carries over. And the nice thing about it is that you can explode it, get coins out of it, and since I have infinite explosions, I basically have infinite money, of course, as well. Um, but the game operates on a pool system, so basically different rooms draw from, from different pools of items. Shop is more of a utility-oriented oriented pool. There's a bunch of items that, that don't necessarily increase your damage, but do a bunch of other stuff. For example, mapping pieces. Since this game is randomly generated, finding any sort of mapping is really huge. Because, you know, you usually don't know where you go, so you have to take wild guesses. But if you have that, uh, that mapping piece, you know exactly where you're going most of the time. Some of them are trolly, but yeah. Um, you find a bunch of different stuff over the course of the run, for example, tarot cards, which do different stuff. For example, Justice gives me a bunch of consumables. It was a less exciting one, but there's some really good ones. So cards are generally really worth it. Um, this run starts off rather nicely, like I'm getting a lot of resources. I'm having, like on the left side, you can see I'm having 21 coins, 10 bombs, and 6 keys, 7 keys, which is a lot. Like, you usually don't have that many resources on the second floor. So that's actually really nice. Um, the game has 13 different characters with some different perks. Uh, for the sake of the marathon, we're doing seven characters today, which is the original seven from Wrath of the Lamb, the first game, like I said earlier. Oh, my sound is gone. Okay, I don't hear a game sound anymore, but it's not a big deal. But yeah, basically these first few floors are going to take it a little bit slower. Uh, try to find our item rooms. Every floor has an item room, a shop, and a boss room. Once you're beating the boss, once you're beating your boss, you can advance to the next floor. Okay, I'm gonna buy a soul heart, blow up that guy. Yeah, once you once you beat the boss, you get a trapdoor to the next floor, and basically the goal is to go as far as possible. The game's roguelike, like I said, so if you die, you're permanently dead. And, um, oh shit. You basically don't want to die because of the massive time loss. Either way, uh, if you manage to not take any red heart damage over the course of the entire floor, which is pretty easy on this character, you get a devil deal. Devil deals open at the end of every floor, and they, um... They basically have very offensively oriented items. So you're going to try and hit as many of them as possible. The biggest factor is taking red heart damage, I said. I'm playing as the blue baby here, which is basically out of the seven that I'm playing today, the hardest character in the game. Uh, he can't get any red hearts, which is one of the most common drops in the game, red hearts. So he can only live off of soul hearts, which 
can't be filled up again. Like, once you lose them, they're permanently gone. Okay, this is a pretty nice shot. Okay, I place a bomb here to blow up the shop guy because he actually ups my devil deal chance. Like I said, there's a bunch of factors of uh, things that up your chance to hit a devil deal and you basically want to abuse them as much as possible. I'm going to buy a bunch of shop items. Um, spider mod is more of a fan favorite thing. It's not really that good of a of an item. It shows me enemy health and every once in a while drops a battery. Oh, God, these resource drops are insane. But yeah, um, this Ipecac run is going to speed up, like, very quickly, fairly soon. Like, I'm getting, I'm basically finding every shop and every item room right now still. But uh, later on, you're using the explosive shots to bomb through rooms, actually. Actually, I'm going to start after seeing this item room. And, um, yeah, from there on out, you're basically going to use the Ipecac to skip as many rooms as possible. This one was a bit inconvenient to skip, so it was, it was just a lot faster to just bomb through, uh, to just bomb the enemies instead of bombing through. But as you can see, for most enemies, I'm just gonna... You can't bomb into the boss room, so you always have to clear the one room that is right before the boss. But yeah. Uh, like I said, this game is randomly generated, so I don't know where I'm going. I was just really lucky to walk exactly towards the boss right there. Um, the spacebar item, you can see in the top left corner. Like, the item in the top left corner is always activated by hitting spacebar. Um, the one I have right here doubles my item pedestal, so basically once I find something good, like this one, which is a damage up, I can just double it and, and get it twice. Okay, so, like I said, we're going to be trying to, to start bombing through most rooms here. There's the item room up there, you can't bomb into that either. And I want the item, obviously, so I'm clearing this. Okay, that's not good. You want to bomb the mushrooms because it can sometimes drop random stuff that's useful. Most notably the Liberty Cap, which I'm going to go into when I find it. Like, we're going to do seven runs, I'm probably going to find one. It's a rather common drop. Okay, Joker Card. Joker Card takes me to the Devil Deal, actually, so I can save that until the end of the floor. Uh, I can save that till the end of the floor and see if I hit the Devil Deal. And on a floor where I don't hit it, I can use it to teleport there. Lemon party. Okay, BFF makes friends stronger. So little ghost, for example, I have here, little haunt. He attacks enemies and does a little bit of damage to them. Basically, he does double damage now. Bombing the shop guy again to up my devil chance. Oops. I'm getting a bunch of bombs here, which I don't really need because bombs and I have, I have an infinite bomb item. Okay, I get tier rate up, which means I can fire faster, which is nice. And this is really not that good. So I'm not taking anything. Okay, we got a curse now. Curses can randomly occur at the start of a floor. Curse of the Blind is a particularly annoying one actually because it makes me not see my items. Like the item pedestals are just question marks now. Okay, this is a pretty inconvenient room too. I'm gonna kill everything here as well. So I'm, I can't see the items now, which which can be risky because there's a bunch of really bad items in the game, which I don't want to accidentally pick up. So except for the shop, like I'm basically gonna be avoiding the the item rooms on Curse of the Blind. Um, shops are pretty safe. Like there's one bad item in the entire shop pool that I don't want to accidentally pick up, and there's like 68 items in the entire pool. So I'm not really worried about I'm not really worried about grabbing something bad here. Okay, I got mom's bottle of pills, which gives me a random pill every six rooms. It's not that good, but conveniently enough, I have uh, I have a PhD, which I bought earlier, which tells me what the pills are actually, which is nice, and actually turns bad pills into good ones as well. Okay, boss pool is safe. Little Steven follows me around and does damage, and this is something that can happen. In Devil Deals, Krampus is just gonna show up and ruin your day. Krampus is, I think, is it from Swedish, like, folklore? I'm not, I'm not sure if it's Swedish, but, like, Krampus basically comes at uh, Christmas to visit the bad children, like the, the misbehaving children. And it's the same for Isaac. Yes. Sometimes just ruins your Devil Deal. He has, like, a 40% chance of appearing once you saw a Devil Deal. 
I'm bombing the skulls here because I can drop random cards, and like I said earlier, some cards are really, really good. So I basically want to try and dig for a really good card here. These ones were pretty meh, but you never know, obviously. You never know if they're going to drop a card and which card they're going to drop. Um, I've been hit by Curse of the Lost on this floor, which is basically the worst curse for speedrunning. It hides your map and gives you a bigger floor, so I actually absolutely don't know where I'm going now. exciting. So it's really easy to lose your sense of direction on Curse of the Lost as well, which is even more, which makes it even more annoying really. But it shouldn't be that fast. Temperance would be nice on another character. Okay, some rooms are just a lot more convenient to just clear them instead of bombing through. That was not one of them. But I might as well kill stuff now. Okay, no, no is actually really good. Um, there's trinkets. There's trinkets in the game. It didn't do anything. Okay. Uh, there's trinkets in the game that occupy uh, an own slot in the bottom left. And this one, no, makes it so I can't find any spacebar items anymore, which can be pretty convenient. For example, for example, like right now, I I have a spacebar item that I'm really happy with, the cramp set. Oh, uh, that guess That's not good. Uh, I have the Krampus head, which is a really good spacebar item, so removing all other spacebar items from the pool gives me a much higher chance of finding something I want. Because I can't find items that, like, I can't find a good chunk of items now that I don't want. Yeah. Grab the sack at the shop, which makes a lot of these uh, money sacks drop, which make a lot of other stuff drop. It's basically to get more resources. And uh, I'm getting really bad RNG here on this floor. I'm actually full clearing the whole thing, which which can happen. Which, which is probably going to happen quite frequently. Uh, as long as I don't find mapping. I did trade out the Ipecac for, for the Tech X. Uh, which gives me laser tears to fire. Tech X, um, like, Ipecac can be situationally faster. Wait, what? It can be situationally faster. But Tech X seems a lot more reliable. I'm gonna use the cramp set here because it's a really nice, nice tool to clear bosses. Okay, and I can actually, if you reach the boss rush, like if you if you beat Mom's foot, the boss I just fought, in under 20 minutes, the boss rush opens at the end of it, and it just has a bunch of items. Okay, I'm gonna grab all of these. Lord of the Pit gives me flight and speed up. The dead cat gives me nine lives at one heart's piece. Actually, and ceremonial ropes is damage and a bunch of health. But yeah, this boss rush that I just... Oh god, Curse of Lost again. <laughs> okay, this is really bad. Okay, Cricket's body I just picked up is a massive tears up, which means they can fire faster, which is really good. Yeah, the dead cat is one of, like, I think six cat pieces. Yeah, there's six cat pieces in the game, the dead cat being one of them, of Isaac's dead cat, Guppy. And uh, what they do, they do different stuff, but if you manage to get three out of the six, any three out of the six, you actually turn into Guppy, into Isaac's cat. And he's like a really, really powerful transformation. I hope we can get it over the course of the run. It's actually really rare, but I mean, we have seven runs, so it might happen. But yeah, we got Curse of the Lost again, which means I don't see my map once again, I have to guess, and it's, it's a bigger map. So it's actually quite annoying. Answers. That's that's ironic because Ansys gives you mapping for one one floor, like it just reveals your whole map. But I can't do that, of course, right now. Okay, I was a bit skeptical of the Tech X when I picked it up because I don't have, didn't have a lot of tier rate. But now that I have this much tier rate, it's definitely better than the Ipecac would have been late game. Which Ipecac is nice early game, but it, it gets shaky later on because it has that kind of fixed damage. It's really hard to to get damage ups with it. And now I just have, don't have to worry about that anymore. Because Tech X handles the last few floors really well. Didn't mean to grab that. Yeah, this game is a lot about like just optimizing the rooms to get, because obviously there's a lot of RNG in it. A lot of stuff that you just can't influence whatsoever. So you basically want to try to do as well as possible. Um, with what you can influence, for example, effective room clear. 
trying to kill things as quickly as possible when going to a room, assessing the room and trying to see how to, to clear the fastest, you know. Uh, with Ipecac, for example, you have to figure out really quickly if the room is one you want to bomb through or where you want to kill all the enemies. And like in a series world record attempt, you basically just hope that the RNG falls into place then and you execute it well. Okay. At the answers rune, I typically want to save that for the very last floor because that's the biggest one. Uh, we're on Utero 2 now. We're actually in Mom's womb. This is how weird this game gets at some point. Um, and this is like, this is the third last floor actually. Some pennies have a random chance of giving you luck up, they're just lucky pennies. You can't really tell them apart. I'm gonna bomb that guy. Blowing up a judgey actually gives you a massive increase to your devil deal chance. Like the shopkeeper the shopkeepers earlier is just a like a little higher chance, but these guys are actually pretty significant. Sometimes you have rooms where there's really just buttons and the like the, the thing you have to do is just press the button and there's like holes and spikes and obstacles in general. But since we're flying, that's really not that big of an issue. The holes can actually suck you in when you're flying, which doesn't really make sense, but yeah. Okay, this is mom's heart, but since we have the cramp set, this is gonna be a rather fast one. And this is actually not that good. And we go to the cathedral. You have the choice between two different paths here after boom, you can go to the cathedral. Or you can go to Shoal, which is basically, like, hell. Um, and at the end of hell, you fight Satan. At the end of Cathedral, you find another boss, which I'm, you're gonna see in a few seconds. Um, cathedral is generally the faster and more reliable path. Cathedral and the floor that comes after it is generally the faster and more reliable path. So people run that. Um, there are people that have run Darkroom, like... Shoal and Darkroom before, but yeah, it's just a lot more fun for people to run chests in general. But, uh, I'm full clear on every floor here. Like, <laughs> this is really bad. Okay, I'm using Cranvis for the big room. Big rooms actually re give you two ticks of charge on your on your spacebar and whoops, on your spacebar item instead of one. Um, but yeah, you're basically just hoping to have the, the Krampus head up again for your boss. But you usually do, the Cathedral is rather large floor. And after playing this game for a while, you, you sometimes you, you just know like when you can use items without having to worry about whether they're going to recharge or not. Okay. Uh, those mini batteries that sometimes drop instantly refill your space for items. So those are something to keep in mind. If you have like a, a big and really bad room, I can just pop the cramps head and, and go back and grab the battery. And that will sometimes be faster than just uh, than clearing the room normally. Okay, this is Isaac. Oh, I I'm getting hit a lot here. I'm saving the Krampus head for the third phase because it teleports around a lot. So you basically want to want to focus your damage on the third phase as much as possible to skip that because every time he teleports around I can't hit him at all so I want to be be able to skip as much of this phase as possible and he actually has a lot more health than any boss we fought at this point okay I have the rune I just use the rune for the chest so I can see my map in the top left corner now this is actually really convenient because I see that question mark room on the on the chest it's actually the secret room and I can bomb into that and use it as a shortcut Get a bunch of pills. Okay, perks is nice. Perks is actually pretty convenient here. It cuts the damage I take in half for one room, so I can basically use it in the final boss. You know, play safe. Oh god. Oh, damn it. Okay, yeah, I died here, but that's not a big deal. I have the nine lives, so I can just basically try this room over and over again. This is actually one of the worst rooms in the entire game. Double cage. I, I hate this room with a passion. People people don't really seem to have trouble with it except for me, but like I really hate it. Once you have one of them down, it's really not a big deal at all anymore. But like killing the first one of them. In the chest, every chest you find, like in this floor we are right now, it's called the chest. Every chest you find on this floor actually has an item in it, so that's pretty nice. 
And I'm gonna pop the pill here. So basically I have two hits now instead of one. Because everything does a full heart in the chest. So I can get a bunch of damage on him. And once I get hit, I can just pop the cramp set. And that's actually the first part of the run. That was a 20 minute. That's not too bad. Okay. So we got Blue Baby out of the way, and we actually can work with Red Health now. Maggie is kind of the most hated character among speedrunners, because she she's kind of meant to be the tank character of the game, so she starts with more health, but lower speed. Which is something speedrunners don't really like, obviously. Uh, but yeah, we're looking for an item here again, just like with Blue Baby. We want something that speeds us up right off the bat. And... Um, after we find that, we're gonna go running again. There's like 18 or 19 items you would start out of a pool of 250. I don't know the exact numbers, there's, there's a bunch of items you start, it's like... It usually goes rather fast because you see a lot of item rooms really quickly. Of course, right as I say that, I reset like 7 times without finding an item room, but... Yeah, it usually goes pretty fast. Um, you know, I might also sit here and reset for like 20 minutes on each character and, and go two hours over estimate, but it usually doesn't happen. Usually doesn't happen. Those machines that sometimes are in the item rooms can actually be used to re-roll an item. Oh, that's nice. If you put money... Oh, there's a labyrinth floor. Okay. If you put money in those machines or bomb them, it re-rolls the item on the pedestal. Obviously, since I don't start with items or bombs, I can't do that while resetting. If you find them along the way, it's usually really convenient. Okay, I picked up Judas Shadow here, which doesn't do anything for me immediately. But it will in a few... I don't know, in a minute or so. This is the next L floor which means it's two floors merged together. You always have a chance of getting that on the first floor of a set of floors. Like, each each part of the game is basically the... Like, two floors, two consecutive floors are one part of the game. You go through two floors of basement, two floors of caves, depths, womb. Um, and the next L floor merges the two floors together, which means that the end of this floor is going to have a devil deal. And like I said earlier, if you take red or damage, you lose a good junk of your devil deal chance. And... Um, Obviously, I need to take red or damage to die with Judas Shadow, so I can't do that right now. So I actually got to clear this floor on base damage, and when I get hit, I just have to try again, basically. That was really bad. That was absolutely my fault. Like Sometimes there, there are instances of unavoidable damage in this game, actually. And it's really just outrageous when you run into them and lose, lose your devil out to it, but that was totally my fault. Like, I shouldn't have gotten hit there. It's really tough getting through two floors at once, like, on base damage, but I really shouldn't have gotten it here. So I basically have to find another, another space for um, another starting item, because it's really not worth continuing if you don't hit that first Devil Deal. Because like I said, the items in the Devil Deal are really um, offensively oriented. So yeah. I'm resetting for four minutes, whoops. That's not too bad. I keep seeing this mushroom too, I swear there's like one item per day that you see over and over again when you play this game. That mushroom is just today's item. I, I was really hoping it would be a good item for today, like a knife or something. Basically the best item you can start with is mom's knife, it's, it's like insane how good it is. Good. That's not good either. That's a health up, actually. I really don't need that. I 
I mean, this is not bad yet. This is like, what, four and a half minutes of reset? But it's, it's gonna get bad. I mean, I've been sitting here before resetting for like 10 minutes, and that's usually like... Like, 10 minutes is just insane, but... Uh, see, this is not an XL floor, you can tell because there's two item rooms. So it's, it's kind of nice to see that, because... You know, you have a higher chance of getting a start, and this is actually really good. Sack Dagger is uh, an orbital that runs around me and blocks tiers, actually. Like, if enemies fire at it, it just blocks the tier, and it actually dishes out an insane amount of damage. And I got the book to go with it, so I got a black heart right off the bat. The book gives me a black heart every time I use it. Uh, which is also really nice, because that means it's going to be easier to protect my Devil Deal chance. I probably wouldn't have started the Sack Dagger on its own, because it's just a really risky item and you get hit a lot. But since I have all this protection now, I definitely want to use the Sack Dagger, because like, just it, it shreds bosses. Like It's really nice, it's just really risky. And I got two really good boss items right off the bat as well. Pentagram is a damage up and ups my devil chance, and Squeezy is a tears up. So we're actually in a really good spot now, and that was a really fast basement, obviously, because it was an XL floor. That's the, the advantage of XLs, is obviously that they're usually really fast. Even though you full clear them, they can be a pain, but yeah, usually they save a lot of time. So yeah, we're going to be using the Sack Dagger a lot, and we're going to be basically... Oh, noise. We're going to be basically taking a lot of damage as well. Okay. But that's fine. Purity, Purity kind of doesn't work with that Sack Dagger build I have here. Uh, Purity gives you one of four random effects. Randomly. Like, you can tell by the glow you have around you. For example, this one is blue, which is a massive tears up, as you can tell. You keep the glow until you get hit. And like I just said, with that Sack Dagger, I'm probably going to get hit a lot. Uh, but yeah, two of them, two of those effects are really, really good. And two are kind of eh. Yeah, damn it. So, yeah. We're going to see. This one is red, actually. That's the other good one. That's plus four damage. It's a really big damage increase. But we're not going to keep that for long either. And uh, that's fine. We're full clearing again, which is... Which is okay on the early floors, really. It's not that big of a deal. Because early floors are short. For so long floors, you don't want to full clear necessarily. <laughs> I'm gonna save my bombs for the donation machine, because that's something I have to pay attention to now, because I don't have a bomb item that I started with. Okay. Okay. This is Pestilence, which is actually really nice. Like, you have a, I think, 10% chance on each floor to find a horseman of the Apocalypse. There's one for each set of floors, and they always drop a cube of meat or a bandage ball, which is another orbital. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the Book of Belial here. It's a three room charge and gives me two damage ups every time, like plus two damage every time I use it. And it actually ups my devil deal chance too. It was bugged in in Rebirth. Actually, to, to make you hit every devil deal, which sadly doesn't anymore. Rip DOB. But yeah. The higher devil deal chance is nice, and the damage is kind of nice, even though obviously my main source of damage output is the Sacrificial Dagger. So it's not going to be doing that much, but... Yeah. The nice thing about two orbits is you can kind of dual wield them, take care of enemies behind and in front of you. Yeah. Okay, I actually want to blow up three mushrooms. Two, two clubs is going to double my bombs, if you have zero it just gives you two. So that's nice. Okay, this guy's exploding, so I really don't want to sack dagger him, obviously. Because he's just gonna explode in my face. And that's a magic mushroom. That's uh, an all stats up, and it actually gives you a 1.5 times damage multiplier. So this one is actually really, really good now. Like, basically, the only thing at this point I want is mapping, and maybe a bit of damage still. And then that's. That's pretty much. Pretty much a one run. These guys are kind of obnoxious because they have the holes between them, so I can't use my dagger against them. I just really wish I would stop clearing every floor. I'm gonna go in here because uh, from Caves 2 and onwards, the shops can actually contain Greed, a mini-boss, which can randomly happen. Uh, and he actually drops a lot of money, so when you have enough keys, when you have keys to spare, you kind of want to go in and hope to find Greed, so you can get the money from him. Because that's gonna help you on shops later on. 
We're actually dishing out pretty good damage here. And we have high speed as well, which is... Like, you're always worried about your speed with Maggie, of course, because her starting speed is lower, like I said. Okay, Fallen. Fallen has a 10% chance of replacing every boss once you've seen a Devil Deal and he actually drops Devil Deal items. Of course, I would get a really bad one here, but I guess that's actually better than Book of Lyle. And then we cramp it afterwards. Great. So this is actually... <laughs> this is really bad. Like, we still haven't seen a single Devil Deal, but our damage is still really good, which is... Usually not how runs go. Yeah, Krampus has a 50% chance of either dropping the Krampus head, which we saw earlier, earlier or Coal. Uh, Coal makes my tiers do more damage the longer they're on screen. Like you can see they increase in size the longer they're on screen. So it's basically DPS up, which is really nice. And you want to make sure to stay far away from enemies. Necronomicon does a lot of damage to every enemy in the room. Uh, which is basically really nice for big rooms. You can just walk in and pop the book and everything dies. Or if it's like a really obnoxious room, we can do that as well. Okay. There you go. Okay. Found a shop in the item room, which is nice, but it's a dead end once again. This can give me a shield whenever I get hit. Okay, and oh, this is really good. Okay, this is the map. Um, it basically does exactly what it says. It reveals the map. And um, what's nice is that usually, like most of the time, the boss room is actually the furthest away from the starting room, the room that's furthest away from the starting room, so the map is actually the most reliable map in case it pretty much most of the time it exactly tells you where to go. So this is actually really good because we have we have a really nice build now, we dish out a lot of damage and we actually know exactly where to go. Okay, I'm gonna use this troll bomb to, to blow up the, the skulls because like I said, skulls can drop really nice cards. And cards are good. For me, has a chance to block shots. It's really not that important, but it's better to have it than not. But with all the health we have, I don't really see myself dying here. I've said that before on much better runs, though. I still died. So, yeah. Okay. These guys you can only hit from behind. They're actually a reference to two Zelda games, to the Knights from Zelda. They're actually called Knights, too. Okay. Get another Horseman here, which means we can get another Bandage Ball, which is going to upgrade our Bandage Ball to level 2. We can upgrade Bandage Balls and Meat Cubes all the way to level 4. And they actually turn into Super Meat Boy and, and Bandage Girl from the game Super Meat Boy and run around and damage enemies. Uh, but you usually avoid anything past level 2 because the level 2 orbital blocks shots still and shoots alongside you. Whereas the, the third level already runs around the room and doesn't block shots for you anymore. Oops. Where are you? Uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna an economic on this and something's arrived i'm gonna economic on this get a bunch of resources and go back and grab the battery in the in the room before to recharge my book because there's another big room coming up which i see on the map so i can use that again this might actually be the wrong way Okay, so the boss room is actually bottom left down there. Okay, these guys are a bit of a troll. They teleport around and sometimes they take forever to appear. Okay, and there's actually our boss room. Oops. So we're back at mom's foot, which is really not an issue whatsoever, but that's actually the dagger. There's only one item in the boss rush I could take right now. With, or like two or three. Like basically those that allow me to teleport out right off the bat. But yeah. Um, okay, this this is an easy map to raid. I shouldn't have any trouble finding a boss here. Probably gonna try to play a little safer from here on out because my health is getting actually a little low. 
Okay. So this grows with the maze, which sometimes r randomly teleports you to rooms you're not even intending to enter. Sometimes it's good because, like, right there, it just gives me the room below me. But sometimes it's also just really trolly and sends you back and forth between the same room. Alright. Alright. Okay, so this is an angel room. This has a chance of happening every time you don't lock in a devil deal. Um, locking in devil deals basically means taking a devil deal. You can only get angel rooms if you don't take any devil deals once you've seen one. Uh, the problem with angel rooms is that they're really inconsistent. Like, they have two or three of the best items in the entire game, and then also a bunch of really bad ones. So you basically always want to try to, to lock in your devil deals, but obviously the game sometimes doesn't let you because it gives you either cramps on basement 2 or the devil deal that doesn't have any items. So it can be kind of trolly. I definitely want to grab this key. You want to have four keys when you enter the chest because there's the four chests right off the bat that give you items. Alright, so we're going to use the sack dagger and basically make mom's heart non issue. Oh, we get a devil deal here actually, and this is really bad. I got a really good run here, and I didn't even take a single devil deal. Like this is really rare actually that that happens. Like usually, usually when you get devil deals like this, your run basically just either dies or takes forever. Okay, I'm gonna take the time to grab this soul heart, and I'm actually gonna bomb here because sometimes under rocks we find crawl spaces. And on the cathedrals, a crawl space can actually skip you the entire floor with a trick that I can hopefully show over the course of the run. Okay. Um, I'm gonna bomb through the longer rooms on the cathedral. You can actually not bomb through rooms on the chest, so it's basically best to use all your bombs on the cathedral to try and skip as many rooms as possible to go faster. Obviously, you kind of have to assess again like what rooms you want to bomb in, uh, bomb through, and which ones you just want to clear. Um, especially when you go into the cathedral with four bombs, you can't just blindly bomb through everything. Okay, and the sack dagger is actually going to make quick work of Isaac here. Um, there's sometimes <laughs> there's these beams of light coming down in the Isaac fight, like not these, but the ones you saw earlier in the second phase, and it's just completely random where they hit. So sometimes Isaac is just going to hit you, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, that second did I totally could have done something about, but. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the key, it puts me to exactly four. So that's kind of fortunate to drop there. And uh, we're actually on the chest, and this is a really long chest. Okay, Ares is a speed up, so that's nice. And the chest is usually where you're, where you're gonna take the longest, so... Usually you wanna try and find something that helps you go through the chest faster. Chest is really a floor you gotta prepare for because it's a floor full of bosses. It can easily cost you a lot of time and troll you really hard. Uh, but I don't really have a lot to deal with the chest in this case, so I basically just gotta fight my way towards the boss. Okay. And these small rooms, these small rooms were actually just added in the most recent patch, like in the in the update. I mean, in Afterbirth. And they can be really trolly, especially with bosses. Like, most small rooms are really not that big of a deal. But once there's bosses in a small room, like even a single boss in a small room can be really annoying. Don't do that. Oh my god, my favorite room again. Even though with the Sack Dagger it's not that bad. Like a lot of things are really not that bad with Sack Dagger. Because it blocks most of the tears when you just stick it inside an enemy. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's this way. This is the longer path, so the boss room is most likely there. Like I said, there's exceptions. Like sometimes the floors, the map just trolls you. But like it's pretty consistent. Like basically it's almost always the longest path. Okay, this is a room with four mini-bosses. Um, 
Now this guy splits up Envy here, so basically what I want to do is I want to wait here, get in this guy's line of sight and make him fire a Brimstone laser. Like he fires a laser and just kills him off really nicely. So I basically want to try to abuse this as much as possible. Uh, because as you can see, this guy splits up and he just, he just keeps splitting. Like I, I think he splits up to four times. You know, four times seems about accurate, so... It just takes really long to kill off all the pieces on your own. And it's just really convenient that Gluttony is here to, to help you out with it. I'm gonna grab the hearts, why not? This chest actually takes health for you to open. I don't know why it didn't do it there, but... Like, the spike chests take health. And we're gonna play vegan. Yeah, he would usually fire at me and it kind of becomes bullet hellish, like you saw it on the last time, the last time. but with the sacrifice dagger you really just run around him and it's pretty convenient. And there was Maggie. Yeah, this is good pace. Um, who's next? Eve? Okay, Eve is kind of an interesting character. She starts with two red hearts and a 0.75 damage multiplier, so she actually has really bad starting damage. But she also starts with an item called Whore of Babylon, which turns you into the Whore of Babylon at a full heart. Half a heart for every other character, but for Eve it's a full heart. And Whore of Babylon actually gives you a lot of damage, and it actually puts her multiplier to 1. So with Eve you basically want to wanna make sure you stay at 1 heart at all times. going on there? Hmm. Yeah, this is the same thing, we're looking for, for an item again that helps me go fast, preferably a knife, but... Oh, Tech X, this is actually one of the best items to start with. We had this earlier, sadly. I wish I had a little more variety in here, but... Uh, tech, I can can form some actually really fancy um, item combinations. Okay. Um, as of the last Afterbirth update, actually, Eve also starts with the Razor, which lets you trade in your health for damage. Like, if I pop Spacebar, it does a full heart of damage to me and gives me a damage up for the rest of the room. Which I don't want to do right now, obviously, because I would die. But, yeah. You can damage buffer there, touch a fire, for half, uh, like, and it does half heart of damage to you, and you can grab the the heart that's in the middle of the spike. All right, make an old bandage, which actually gives you an empty heart container, which is really convenient. And we move on. Okay. Golden chests can randomly give you items, and they draw from their really own pool. Like, they basically have like head-based items, if that makes sense, like Guppy's head. Cricket's head, like any anything basically that has to do with head. Oh, well. uh, and the golden chest pool is actually really good, but they do cost keys. Screws the tears up, which is nice, and this is pretty good. Button baby is actually familiar that fires flies, and they do two times my damage. And a Thamey, or however you pronounce it, the other one I picked up in the Devil Deal, gives me a, a black ring of doom every time I get hit. I can show this off, like, once I get hit, basically, or once I get a room full of enemies. And the black ring, like, it's around you and does a lot of damage, and actually can give you hearts for every enemy you kill. Okay, sometimes when you blow up these these Tinnid Rocks, these rocks with the, with the X on them, you can find this, which is the small rock, which is plus one damage and a little speed down. So that's really nice. They usually give you soul hearts, sometimes other resources, and in like one one in ten, it's a small rock for some damage. Okay. Oops. Oh yeah, that's a black ring. Of course, I didn't react there and couldn't do damage then. But we'll have more chances. I'll get hit more. Don't worry. Okay. Little chat drops red hearts, which is actually bad with Eve because he he just spills a lot of red hearts on the ground and. Sometimes you, you collect them on accident and lose your, your whore. That sounds really wrong. So yeah, you, you want to avoid that guy because he drops the red hearts that you don't want as Eve. Okay. Uh, 
There was the item room right of the bat, and sadly I didn't have a key. So I couldn't go in there. Uh, I'm probably not gonna go back. The item rooms are really inconsistent, and like even if I have one key, I kinda rather hope to find some coins and actually go to the shop. I'm actually gonna grab that. I also have that temperance card, which is gonna spawn a temperance machine where you can actually trade in health for coins. So that would be nice. If I could do something with that. I'm gonna check the shop and it's greed again. Okay. Uh, mini balls have a random chance of dropping set items, like greed can drop the steam sale. And it actually halves the price of every item in shops from here on out. Again. He, okay, that was really good RNG. He's normally supposed to attack you, but like it's random when he does. So I was actually just lucky that he just stood still there and let me kill him. Okay, and we get Curse of Lost again. Map hidden, bigger floor. So yeah, that's one of those blood donation machines where you can just trade in health for, for coins. They sometimes spawn randomly, but the card allows me to get one uh, whenever I want. Which might not be anytime soon. But you never know. Oh, God damn it. Okay. Eternal hearts, the white hearts uh, actually count as half a heart that gets used up when I get hit. Like, they they get used after the blue and black hearts. Uh, if I can carry an eternal heart to the next floor, I get a heart container for it. Or if I find another eternal heart and grab that. Okay, I have no idea where I'm going. Okay, this is a library. Um, like, if it's a locked door, it's either a shop or a library. Oh, wait, what? Oh no, we fought Greed last floor, right? Okay, uh, I'm gonna blow up that guy, like last time, to up my devil deal chance. Strength card. Strength card is probably better. Strength card give me, gives me the magic mushroom effect for one room, actually. 1.5 times multiplier to my damage. So I can use that on a boss fight to speed it up. Uh, I'm blowing up some skulls. Rainbow poops fill up your whole red health when you, you pop them, and they play silly animation to waste time. You generally don't want to, but there was really not a lot I could have done to avoid popping that. I feel like I'm seeing the same bosses over and over again. There's like five or six different bosses per floor, and I'm seeing the same ones all Ooh, nice. Okay, I'm gonna take that because it's free. Okay, this is Mom's knife. I was talking about it earlier. It's basically the, the fastest item in the game. It just gives you knives you can throw and it does like double your damage and takes a lot. And uh, it works nicely with Tech X because it doesn't override it. You can use the Tech X in, in combination with a knife. Oops. In combination with a knife. Bad. Fortune teller machines can pay out with soul hearts uh, and they can randomly explode whenever you play them and give you a crystal ball which would be full mapping so you kind of want to try with your leftover coins because I need 15 to buy an item in the shop but I can use the other three to just try and, and get the random chance crystal ball which would be really good Okay, Spoonbender. Spoonbender is a homing shot, which basically is going to make my knife homing. And my, my tech X shot, which on the tech it looks really nice, which is basically the main reason I took it, because it's, it's okay with a knife, but it's not necessarily something you want to get. Yeah, okay, nothing in here. And we can go to the next floor. This is actually pretty fast. Damn it. Okay, this is a dead end again. We don't have mapping. 
but with the knife it's not that big of an issue because like I said it's just such a fast item that like even if I fall clear I'm still gonna go pretty fast. lot of bad rooms here. I'm actually full clearing just now that I said it, of course it wouldn't. It would troll me. I've full cleared a lot of floors already, like it's normally not this bad. But you have to fully clear everything. Damn it. Okay, I don't need that key because like I said I need four for the end game and I have five already so I don't need to go back for it. It's just another one of those little time saves you wanna wanna keep in mind. Oops. No, don't hit that. Okay. Uh, of course, the knife has a limited range, which is kind of its, its only weakness, but I have to take X for that to actually hunt down enemies that are kind of far away. So this is still really convenient. And uh, as you can see, the knife just picks apart every single boss. Okay, so it's gonna double my keys actually, which now I have way more than I could ever use. Which is good. Oh, damn it. Oh, god, no. I'm actually getting really close to dying here, I need to pay attention. I definitely don't want to die with a knife. Like I said, since this game is randomly generated, there's sometimes it will just kill you by giving you a really bad run. Uh, but you really should never die on a, on a knife run. And we're at Mount Hard already. Once more. Okay, little devil deals. Devil deals have a lot of items that can give you health, actually. That's not either of them. Uh, neither of them would have given me health, so I didn't pick them up, but you're kind of. In Womb 2, you're kind of really hoping that you get one of them just to get, like, that, that little bit of health boost towards the end of the run again. Like before it gets to the really tough floors, but like I said, with a knife and tech X, I really shouldn't have too much trouble beating this. I do need to pay attention. There's a tinted rock here, which is convenient. Like the, it has a little X on it, which means it's probably gonna give me soul hearts. Or at least one soul heart. Okay. And as you can see, towards, towards the end of the game, like in the cathedral here, we're already gonna have a lot more. Um, bosses in rooms. I definitely want to check the card. Okay, Arofan gives me two soul hearts, so I really don't see myself dying at all at this point anymore. Uh, I might as well go for that. I could have a really good item. Huh. I don't know why I grabbed that. It actually doesn't do anything with a knife. Uh, Keeper's Head gives you penny tears, which makes a lot of money spawn every time you hit an enemy. Not every time, but it has a chance of giving you money every time you hit an enemy, which basically means it's going to give you a lot of money. But, like, since I have a knife, I have no tears, so I can't get pennies. It's just one of those items you grab out of reflex because it's, like, so good if you find it early game. Okay, don't need a nickel. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna grab that just in case. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I'm gonna use the strength part here for the 1.5 times damage multiplier. Uh, because, like I said, Isaac has these random teleports where he just gets off screen for a really long time, so you wanna you wanna cut down the time on the on the Isaac fight as much as possible. Like this fight is actually longer than the, the fight in the chest against Blue Baby. Okay, money equals power gives me damage up for every coin I have. This makes me go faster. Little Haunt is cute. And holy water is eh. Okay, I'm gonna bomb a random wall here in hopes of it being the secret room. Like, if you can find the secret room randomly, it basically is just a really big shortcut. 
And I don't really... I, I'm not going to use my bombs for anything else on the chest. Damn it. Now, this is where the, where the homing knife control you. You try to throw it at an enemy and it just decides, nope. I'm going to go for another enemy. Curve Torn is plus two damage. That's nice. Yeah, I can actually use use the black ring here because these guys split up into a lot of small enemies. So I can use the black ring here and it, it usually spawns a really big number of, of black hearts for me. Because like I said, every time I kill an enemy with this black ring I get I have a chance to get a black heart. And since there's so many of them, uh, it's just a really good chance to get it. Okay. Just getting all the dead ends. Yeah, this is actually dead end again. It's pretty unfortunate. <laughs> These are some of the worst maps I've seen, honestly. Like, it, they make you think you're on the right track by giving you one of those really long corridors, and then they're just like, "Not today." Nope. But other than that, I mean, the knife is just being knife here, killing everything. Baby. Okay. And that's the third run. 56. Alright. Um, we're gonna run Samson next. Okay, Samson is interesting too. He starts with an item called Bloodlust, which increases your damage for the entire floor um, every time you get hit, up to six times. And we actually got a fast start for once. Okay, this little guy, little brimstone, is actually really, really nice. He follows me around and fires brimstone lasers every time I release the fire button. Like, you can charge him up, and once he's charged up, he fires a brimstone laser as soon as you release the fire button. And he actually, like, just tears apart the early game. He has issues late game, but I mean, I have an entire run to stack up something nice. So, okay, this is really good. I'll come back for that. I, I could walk over the spikes to get the book immediately, but then I would take red heart damage, which I can't do on the second floor, or which I want to try and avoid doing. So either I have to wait until I find a bomb and go back and bomb for it, or I just wait until I clear the floor and, floor and then come back. Um, but now I have it. The Book of Secrets actually reveals parts of my map every time I use it. I'm not going to use it here because basement is generally a really small floor. And you know, it's not really likely that I'm going to need it. I'm going to place this here so I get the pot as well. Pots can drop lots of money or they can just give you nothing. Okay, that's lots of money. So we're going to go back for the shop and see if we find something nice there. And so I'm gonna buy the soul heart and move along. Now I'm gonna save the book for the next floor. Like I said, the basement, uh, like the basement floors are really small, so I don't necessarily need to use the book. And I want to make sure I have it at the beginning of the next floor. But That. Damage and tears up. And I'm gonna grab that for resources as well, actually. Contra from below makes everything drop twice. Like every end of the room drop is gonna drop twice now. So it's basically a really nice way to get resources. Okay, the Book of Secrets give me the compass effect here, which shows me all my end rooms. Compass obviously reference to, to Legend of Zelda games as well. It shows me my end room, so I have a rough idea of where I'm going, but I don't see the paths. So sometimes it can look like I'm going towards the towards the boss room, but I'm not. But it's usually pretty reliable, too. The the only one that you really don't want to see is the blue map. But I'm sure now that I've set that... Wait. Now that I've set that, we're going to get a bunch of blue map rocks on the next two floors. Okay. Okay, now I have the keys to go to the iron room. I want to save my keys for the shops, generally. 
What if I have a spare key? I'm gonna go to the arm room, of course. Okay, that's a lot of bombs, actually. I can use that to blow up the donation machine. Like I said, if I blow up this machine or put coins in, it's gonna re-roll the item into something different. And as long as I have bombs and the machine doesn't break, because I can do that, I can actually just roll for items I want. I got piercing shots now, which means my, my shots travel through enemies now, or they pierce. Black Handle ups Devil Deal chances and actually makes it so I can't get hit by curses. Which is really nice. So mo no more trolling for this one. This is the map rock. This is the best one you can get, like I said earlier. The map is just really reliable. Okay, and the condor from below is already doing work there. Giving us loads of resources. Okay, there's a liberty cap, actually. I mean, I have a piece of map. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna grab it. Liberty cap. Um, it has a chance of giving me a random effect, a random mushroom related effect from the game actually, every time I enter a room. And for some reason, amongst those mushroom effects, there's also the compass. So if necessary, I can actually keep walking in and out of rooms uh, to proc, uh, to force the compass proc. It's, it's really annoying and not very fun to look at, so I'm going to try to avoid it, but like, if I get really desperate for it, I might have to do it. I'm gonna grab a bunch of money. I have enough bombs to not really worry about the money too much. Because I can just bomb the donation machine in a shop. I've seen a lot of greed. On the on the last few runs. Wait, what? Oh what? Okay, I didn't pay attention there. I didn't I didn't know that this wasn't the boss room when I was there. I should have. But yeah, I, I was just expecting the boss room to be there, so I didn't notice it, it wasn't. It's actually down here. Uh, nice thing is when you have the map, the mapping effect from the book, and the Liberty Cap reveals your your icons, your your boss room. It's actually going to stay there permanently. It normally doesn't, like you only have it for one room. But with the map, it just stays on permanently for some reason. Speed up's nice. Gives me a random pill too, which I'm gonna use. Lock down. It's not a big of a deal. Like, there's really only two pills you don't want to see, which is tears down and speed down. Lockdown is kind of annoying because it makes less stuff drop at the end of rooms. But yeah. I get coal again, which is basically the one I want here. I wouldn't take the Krampus head because I have the, the book. So I can't replace my map, my, my spacebar item really. Krampus is usually the guy that you see the item you don't want, but he's been really nice so far this run. I don't think I've ever gotten what I didn't want. This is double locked room. Double locked rooms are either dice rooms or key rooms. Dice rooms do something different depending on what's on the floor. Uh, like what, what number is on the dice. Uh, the two one like the the two dice rolls all the consumables that are on the floor. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty much gonna try and go over them as I come across them. Okay, we actually have a shop here. Uh, sharp plug is nice. Sharp plug when I have an empty space item, I can press space bar and immediately refill my space item at the cost of two hearts. So if I ever have too much health. I can actually use that to, to my advantage to use the book more often, or if I get the blue map proc. So yeah. Okay, this guy's got always dropping Gish. Which I don't want. Gish is a shooting familiar that runs, like, that flies behind you and shoots uh, slowing tears. But the slowing effect is actually more annoying than helpful, so I'm not gonna grab him. And I don't hit the devil deal. Okay, we got the compass proc, which is nice. So 
basically we see our icon homes again. This this book has been really nice to me too. That Dagos rune I just picked up is not very helpful. It it clears curses from a floor, but since we have the black hand, we can't get any curses. But it also gives you soul heart. So I'm just gonna save it and see it if I need it at a later point. Okay, I can bomb the machine again for a while and yeah, get a magic mushroom. <laughs> That's bad. So far it's doubles your red hearts, like the red hearts in the containers. But since I have full health, that didn't really do anything for me. Okay, I'm gonna grab the soul heart for safety, because I have so little health. Okay. Okay, I was saying earlier that little brimstone is kind of underwhelming in the late game. I'm gonna use that for the soul heart and take that with me. And we're gonna see that, like, basically after the next floor. That little brimstone is gonna gonna start to fall off a little. But I luckily picked up that magic mushroom just now, which means it's gonna be a little easier with the multiplier to go through the floor. We got Red Mom here. Like, some bosses have champion versions of them. Uh, what? Uh, some bosses have champion versions to them. Oh my god. And um, that those champions basically act a little different. Like, for example, Red Mom doesn't spawn enemies and stomps a lot more. What am I doing? Okay, so this is something I was hoping we wouldn't get. This is a loop floor. Like, this floor has a loop. And loops are kind of... They tend to mess up the whole map generation. Because, like... Technically, walking around the loop means the boss room could be anywhere, right? Because as long as you loop around, um, it's the longest path. Even though it might not look like it, it could be the longest path if you just take the loop, you know, walk in a circle and... Yeah, it's probably up there, yeah. But, like, it could have very well been bottom left. Oh, we fight two bosses here, actually. Box gives you a bunch of consumables, it's not really that nice. It's mainly the card you're going to be looking for, because, like I said, cards can be really good. Alright. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, that's fine. Uh, this blue map, uh, this, this Book of Secrets has been so good. Like, it's rarely that good. The thing is normally, like, really trolly. The game usually does everything to prevent you from getting, getting a good run, but... It's, it's nice today. Game is in a good mood. Uh, this is a guess. Like, this room is three away from the room I just was, and the other one is three away as well. So you're gonna just have to guess and hope to walk towards the boss room. Of course, I would guess correctly. Uh, incorrectly. Because I've been full clearing all day. Okay, I still have that High Priestess card, which actually summons Mom's Foot from the Mom's Foot fight and attack an en attacks an enemy to do a lot of damage to it. So I'm gonna save that for the Isaac fight again, because, like I said, this, that's the, the fight where I wanna save most of the time on. Alright. Whoops. <laughs> okay, I sharp plugged on accident there. Like I said, I can, I can refill my space for item for two hearts. And I, what I just did there was actually my mashed space bar, because I totally forgot I had a sharp plug. So it immediately refilled my space bar item and, and cost me two hearts, but I didn't mean to do that. Something just happened. Uh, okay. Oh, damn it. Okay, see, this is where the compass made it kind of look like I had to go down, but in reality it wraps around here. Okay, I'm gonna skip the big room with a bomb. This is really annoying. Okay, and then we have to clear that guy because the boss is here. Oh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Damn, what? Okay, I didn't see what hit me there. But like I said, this fight becomes like a little bit of a bullet hell. If you actually don't have the damage, skip most of it. But it, it's really not that bad. I used the, the High Priestess card there, like I said, to make Mom's foot stop Isaac to do a bunch of damage then. Alright, and you get a map again, nice. Okay, this is really bad. The flush could help, but that's about it. Okay, um... Mini bosses have fixed drops, like for example, a slot here either always drops a card or rune. Or boss drop in head, like the spacebar item. Uh, and basically, in a, in a room with multiple mini bosses, which mini boss you kill last determines what drop you're gonna get. So you wanna try to kill Sloth last for the chance of getting a card. Oh, damn it. That's close. I don't really need those bombs, but I'm taking them just in case. You can kinda use bombs to fight multiple enemies at once, you know, shoot one, place a bomb next to the other, but it's usually not even that convenient to do. Okay. okay, I was looking for the secret room there, I was kind of just hoping it would be there, so I could skip a room. Entrance chariot, that's not me was. Oh god. Okay, this is, this is easily one of the worst rooms in the game, quadruple cage. Like, this is basically a champion version that makes two cages spawn. This room normally has two of these guys, and it's, like, really terrible already. And sometimes the game is just like, yeah, fight four of them. I'm actually gonna blow this temperance machine up and hope it gives me a soul heart. And it doesn't. Okay, but the boss is coming up, and we're at three and a half hearts. Like, it should be fine. Okay. Uh, once again, the boss you kill last determines the drop you get, and Blue Famine is actually, like, the blue guy is actually guaranteed to drop me a soul heart if I kill him last. So I want to do that. The problem is Wrath has this, uh, this tendency to jump, sometimes just place bombs and blow him up. He luckily didn't dare, but he could have. Like I said, I get a soul heart here. And it's gonna make the whole thing a bit safer. I don't need any of that. It was just in my way, so I collected it. Guppy's color is not a guppy piece. But, obviously, my first guppy piece on the last row in the game doesn't really help me a lot. We gotta be beat Blue Baby and then we move on to the next character. And I'm actually losing track of what characters I've already done because I don't have my splits here. And when I'm speedrunning this game, I usually look at my splits to see what character's next. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think Kane is next. Kane. Kane is supposed to be the game's rogue character. He starts with Luckfoot and higher luck. Uh, he has a nice damage multiplier of 1.2 times. And, um, yeah. Once again, we're looking for an item. Um, my sound just went out again. I have no sound on my headphones. Is anyone here? <laughs> Oh, damn it. Okay, I skipped over an item room there. Because I was distracted. <sighs> so we're resetting for an item again. So we can go fast. Um. Okay, yeah. That's better. Thank you. So we're trying to find something that helps us go fast. Preferably an item we haven't had so far. I want to show off a bunch of items in this game. Not just get Tech X all over again. But we'll see. I'm really far ahead of my estimate actually. I might be able to show off one of the 
alternate bosses. I might, I don't know yet. Um, Kane also starts with a paperclip, which is also from a recent update. Um, paperclip is a trinket that allows you to open every golden chest for free, which is really nice. Uh, because it basically just means you have to worry a lot less about about your keys. Like, Kane usually ends with a really healthy stack of, of consumables, which is really nice. Okay, this is Scythe. This is really nice. Scythe give you a, a big damage up in piercing shots. And they also make your tiers a lot bigger. They also make your tiers a lot bigger. Which means it's going to be a lot easier to hit enemies. Like, your aiming doesn't need to be as precise. Uh, which is especially nice when you try to abuse the the piercing effect from the scythe. Okay, just tin rock there, then can blow up. And uh, it's quite conveniently right next to the super secret room. Didn't get uh, didn't get anything worth noting there though, sadly. Uh, you're usually hoping for four soul hearts early on, so you can protect your red hearts. But the game just decided to give me a golden chest that didn't even have anything in it. Anything worth noting. Okay, and we get a range up. Range up is basically like there's three range ups in the boss pool, and those are basically the worst items you can find. So you don't really want to see those. Okay, okay sad onion is nice. That's a big tears up. Which is always nice with scythes. Scythes are a tears down, actually. Which sometimes puts you in these awkward situations where you don't find a single tears up for the entire run. And then your run is just really, really rough. So I got scythes here, and the magic, uh, the, the, the small rock is actually tears up as well. Which means our tier rate is already really good. Small rock is only a, a small tears up, but it still helps. I should grab that stuff. We did get Curse of the Lost here again, which means our floor is, like, really big, but it's not that big of an issue. Oh god, that's an issue. Okay. We've got a small boss room, but Monster is really not that bad. It's like the only boss I don't mind fighting in small room. Uh, the problem with small rooms is they can sometimes glitch out and make a Devil Deal not spawn, so we might actually not get a Devil Deal here, even though we didn't take any radar damage and the chance should be 100%. But we're lucky. Okay, this is trash. I'm gonna take the Razor Blade because like I said earlier I have to take an item to lock in the deals make sure I don't get an Angel Room later on but like I don't really want the Razor. I basically just take it because I want to get rid of Angel Rooms and like the other item is actually a really bad item because it plays uh, a little animation every time I get hit and it wastes a lot of time <laughs> I don't need that. You basically look for items in those challenge rooms, but even then, you don't clear them that often. It's actually really rare to have an item. Mm, that's better than a razor. The D10 can reroll enemies, actually, which is nice in the later stages of the game, when there's like really a lot of high tier enemies. You can try and reroll them into into weaker versions. Okay, I'm not gonna grab little chat again because it really just occupies a follower slot and it doesn't do much of anything. It's the guy that drops hearts that I didn't take earlier because it was actually bad on Eve, but he's still really bad, so. Okay. Get my item room here, which is nice. I'm just. Ooh, that's really good. Okay, sad bot. That's really bad. Uh. <laughs> Roller coaster of emotions here. Um, sad bombs makes a burst of my tears uh, go around every time I place a bomb. It's kind of hard to explain. Like it's a lot easier once I place down a bomb to see what it does. And it's actually really good with scythes because it adds 25 damage to all those tears. So basically, it does this. Um, and it's really neat. Like it kills bosses really fast. Like it's especially good with scythes. So that was actually a really good find. I can basically just do this and, like, he's almost dead. Or she. Birdie's a she, I think. Clearly. 
Oops. Yeah, I want tier 8 more. This is not tier 8. That's not tier 8 either. That's flight and speed, so I'm gonna take it. Alright, Micro 1. Okay, I'm still blowing up a bunch of skulls, but I want to keep some bombs as well for the donation machine and just for, for boss player. Uh, this is really bad. <laughs> okay, this is a library. Libraries have books in them, naturally. And, uh, like, when you find a library, you kind of always hope to get the, the Book of Secrets I had earlier, the one that gives you mapping. Um, but that one didn't want to play long. That one didn't actually... That, that, that one had, like, not a single good book. There's like only 10 in the pool. And that was five of them. But yeah, oh god. This guy's annoying. Or this guy would be annoying. Okay, there's a devil deal, but I can't take anything right now, which is why I'm kind of hoping to get Krampus, actually. That was really bad. So I'm kind of just hoping to get Krampus here to get him out of the way, because I can't take an item anyway. And if I get coal, I actually... I did a Krampus head. It still shreds bosses. We saw it earlier. Uh, the Bible that I had gives you flight for one room and it actually one-shots mom in mom's heart. But so does the Krampus head. The Krampus head one-shots them too and it actually kills other bosses as well, so... I'm gonna take the Krampus head with me. I'm gonna get the head. Halo flies give me two orbital flies that block shots. They don't do any damage, but they block shots. Makes them a really good, really good safety item. Makes it larger. Yeah, I'm running out of bombs here, sadly, but it's kind of a bunch of stuff I have to do. What? Okay, I'm kind of just hoping to come across a battery here when I when I pop that Krampus head. Either a battery or enough rooms to fill up the Krampus head. I should get the shop. Like, it should be really close, so I'm actually going to go back to fill up the Krampus head and find the shop. Uh, because, like, killing this room is make me is going to... It's going to make me one-shot mom. And that's obviously good enough time save. Okay, there's actually the compass there for 15 cents, so I might actually try and grind up some money. I need only 2 cents, which is fairly common to get. I basically need a bomb or 2 cents. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and clear this floor to get the compass. Because that would be a really big speed up to my run. Oh, see, there's a bunch of bombs, so that's the compass. Uh, my sound just went out again. Okay. So we're gonna grab that compass. Which shows me the icon rooms. Mapping, like I said, always nice. It's a huge factor to have mapping. And then we're gonna use the Krampus at a one-shot mom. Probably. Oh, it is gonna one-shot. Nice. Okay, that's a sack dagger, but taking it would put me down to one heart, so I kind of don't want to do it. I'm going to blow up this guy and see if he gives me soul heart. But even then, it would be kind of shaky. So I'm just going to skip on it. Time are we at? 124. Okay. Uh, with how the icon rooms are placed, I... Like, the map kind of makes it look like you want to go left to get to the boss room, but with how the icon rooms are placed, it really makes me think. Uh, that this is the way to the boss. So I'm gonna go here. Alright. And you can see that the piercing from the sides really helps here, like, when enemies start in line like this. It's just really easy to get multiple ones of them with the same shot, especially against these guys, because they're really annoying and you can't really get close ever. Uh, this is one of my favorite instances of enemies in the entire game, teleporting enemies in a big room. 
when you don't see everything. Like, this guy could be anywhere, and as soon as you see him, he just teleports away, and it's a real big annoyance. Oh, there he is. Yeah, you get to hit on him, and he teleports away. And if you don't just happen to walk where he is, he just, he just ruins your day. Alright. Conquest. Conquest sometimes goes up in the air and, and spawns the beams like this. And they, they just hit random places. It's actually absolutely random where these beams hit. So you kind of just hope they don't hit you. Alright. Nothing in the Devil Deal I needed, so... I'm just gonna move on. Okay, this is a really hard map to read because, like, with where the I icon rooms are located, it could be either way. So I kind of just have to... to guess where to go. Okay, uh, this is the wrong way, actually. Damn it. These problems. Learn to read maps. Oh, damn it. Okay, the piercing is going to be really nice against this guy. Because he just splits up all the time and the sides hit him immediately. What do we got? Awas. Awas lets you skip a floor. But you can't do that from womb 2 and onwards. Or utero 2 in this case. But that's actually completely pointless room. It actually has a chance to give you a crawl space. So I guess I can try that. In one of the rooms. I want to kill this guy because I want to start conserving bombs at this point. Because, like I said, they they just help, like with. He was. Okay. If that has a ladder, it means it's a crawl space. But as it is right now, I can't go in there because it would mean I couldn't go to the final boss because it would put me to show. Yeah, I'm just gonna use a scythe bomb for that, and then we're gonna do this. Okay, this would be too good to be true, yeah. But like, you have to check. Sometimes it is a short floor like that, and you just you just don't want to miss it. But yeah, actually, I can make him stomp the door, and it just opens. Oh god. Is it here? Okay, this got kind of awkward to read. Like, because in the room below me there might be a branch to the right. There should be actually. Yeah. I wish I had more bombs. We can always hope to find like 99 bombs in the chest. Uh, okay, that's another one. Larger pill. Okay, as you can see, the, Merse, the, the the curse of the maze just shoves me around here and, and puts me into rooms I didn't even intend to go in. So, yeah. And, like, if it, if it feels like it, uh, that curse can actually, like, put me above, like, in one of the rooms I came from here again. But it's sadly... It's, a, it's in a good mood today. It doesn't feel like trolling me. Alright. And once again, I'm going to use the Krampus head on the third face of Isaac. Just to kind of, you know, uh, skip as much of the third face as possible. There's going to be the RNG beams in the second phase. Uh, so if they want to hit me, they're going to once again. But I mean, I have enough health. I have a really big health buffer here, so I'm not really worried about anything. This build is actually really not that good. This build is actually really not that good, but... It should be good enough to finish the run. I just hope I get a bunch of bombs in the chest. That would be probably the best thing I can ask for. In like, aside from obviously getting one of the best items in the game, like knives or epiphies or something. Alright. Okay. So we got larger shots and we got the guillotine. The Gichi makes your head orbit around you, and, and it functions kind of as an orbital. It does a little less damage than the Sacrificial Dagger, which we had earlier. But it's also really awkward, like, with your head rotating around you. It's kind of hard to 
to um, evaluate where your hitbox is. But like with a, with a build like this, I feel comfortable taking the guillotine. It's it's a really hard item to get used to though for newer players. Like when this game was new, basically, and the guillotine was first introduced, like people knew it was a good item, but just nobody would take it because it was so hard to use. Okay, sides are actually really good against envy. So that's nice. I won't have to use blood me this time to brimstone him. Once again, I wanna wanna kill sloth last because he drops a random card. What? Okay, because he drops a random card, and uh, that can be really good. That was a Hierophant. It's not really what I was looking for, but health is always nice, right? I obviously want to try firing away, so most of the time oops, I hit both of these guys. Oh, wrong way again. Law fast. Okay, he's involved with Rotten Head here. Which actually, funnily enough, like, Wolf's Rotten Head is just a, a throwable bomb that explodes on impact. That explodes on impact, but it stacks with your tier effects, so it actually works with the sad bombs. So it does that. So that's actually gonna be really nice. I also went the wrong way here. Like, not here, but like when I went up. That was totally unnecessary. I have the compass, and I see that a boss is bottom right. I don't know what I was thinking. I just didn't watch my map. Uh, that wasn't even a bad floor, but I managed to make it bad somehow. All right. I was really hoping this would just be direct path to the boss, but we'll have to go through the bigger room. And these guys are actually really annoying too. Damn it. I'm running really low on health, but I should be fine. Oh god. the same game with the demon. with um, Famine again here that I want to kill the blue guy last because he drops me so hard, but it's going to be really hard with the random bomb drops, you yeah. know, and the fact that it's really not that easy to aim my sights. I really want to have at least one soul heart left before I go, like when I go into the blue baby fight, because you can, you can get tapped easily on that one. I really hope I can manage to keep it. Oh god. Okay, that's a good room. Okay, so we have one one hit for Blue Baby, which should be more than enough. I mean, I have this, and that's gonna do a lot of damage. And then I have the Guillotine, which does a lot of damage and blocks tears. So yeah, yeah, we're good. Like, even if I take damage now, like, I should just be doing enough damage. Like, I get a five second invincibility shield every time I get hit from the Polaroid, so yeah, we're good. Okay, so there's two characters left, Judas and Isaac. Um, this is good faith. Um, Judas starts with a Book of Belial, one hard, and uh, a really high damage multiplier, 1.35 times. Uh, he's kind of the last cannon character of the game. Uh, his low health is going to make it a bit difficult taking Devil Deals. But, like, the book gives you two damage every time you use it as well, so he's really just a, a really high damage character. And, um, as long as we get, like, a soul heart along the way, we should be fine. Which you usually do. Like, sometimes you get trolled with Judas really hard, but... You shouldn't. But first off, we're gonna reset for a good item again. Which, those aren't good items. Not the health item, but that's not really what we're gonna start.
I can actually use the machine because Judas starts with three cents. Not the best restarting luck no, once more, but that's fine. We had those instant starts. We had like two instant starts. And um, like mostly the resetting times probably haven't been too bad. Undefined is one of my favorite items in the game, but you can't really start it, sadly. Can't really start any of this. Should be getting an item soon. Polly. Um, I personally don't like it, but it's like a pretty consistent item to finish runs and can go really fast. It basically gives me this massive tier damage multiplier. It's plus four damage and then times two as well. Uh, but it makes me fire really slow, as you can see. So my main objective for Polly, of course, is to hope and get some tier rate. Because my tiers do a lot of damage. It's just a matter of getting the tier rate. Okay, that's, percent, uh, that's a health up. It's not tier rate. Uh, you still want quite a bit of damage with Polly, but it also synergizes nicely with a lot of stuff because it just gives massive damage up to most things. So yeah, it's really not that good. Pop off Fly follows me around and fires tears at enemies that are close. It's basically a turret that follows me, but it doesn't really do much of anything. God damn it. Okay, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to the shop with this key actually and try and buy a soul heart. Like I could open the golden chest, but soul hearts are pretty reliable to find in shops and I need a soul heart to be able to take devil deal safer and to protect my devil chance. range. We don't need range. That's really good. Okay, Succubus um, runs around in the room and he has this black aura around him, like this black circle as you might be able to see. Like I don't know how good the quality is on the video, but it's, it's pretty it's pretty noticeable on most floors unless you get a, the really dark one. Either way, um, like that, that black area around him damages enemies and while I'm standing in it I actually get 1.5 times damage. So that's... The, Succubus is really good. Uh, I found an Emperor card here, which is basically the best card in the game. It takes me directly to the boss, which means I can just skip the entire chest, which is really nice. Okay, and once again I can use my Book of Belial here uh, to get plus two damage for the boss fight. Okay, and Mr. Dolly actually gives me a pretty sizable cheers up. Wow, this is really good. Okay, Dead Cat gives me nine lives and a Guppy piece. Like I said, if I get three different cat pieces, I turn into a cat, which is really good. And the goat head actually makes you hit every devil deal. Uh, which, like said, devil deals have a lot of offensively oriented, oops, a lot of offensively oriented items, and hitting all of them usually makes you get a pretty good run. Like they control you, like said, like everything in this game, everything controls you. You always got to be prepared to be trolled, basically. No, yeah, like that, for example. Sometimes there's just random exploding enemies right next to you and if you have something like the succubus that deals damage to stuff immediately, it just kills them and it blows up in your face. Alright.
So we got a greed again, as always. Because we I normally wouldn't be able to take stuff here, but since I have the dead cat, I can just take a devil deal and I die and I respawn because I have nine lives. Uh, I'm actually gonna grab a bunch of these. Pheromones. Oh, damn it. Down. Okay. Damn it, come here. Okay, so, um, obviously, normally, when you go down to, ha to to one heart like I did there, you would be worried about your Devil Deal, but since I have the Goat Head, that's not even a big of, of an issue, because I hit every Devil Deal anyway, even if I take Red Heart damage, so this is actually nice. I still would like to get a little bit more of damage and, and tier 8, but this run is pretty solid so far, and I mean, I'm hitting every Devil Deal, so I have a good shot at getting more damage. Okay, milk is kind of like holy water where it spills when I get hit in a room. But when milk spills, like the, the pool it leaves behind doesn't damage enemies that much. But therefore I get a tears up for the entire room. So basically if I can manage to build up some health here, I can use the milk in rooms I want to. Like get hit on purpose to up my tier rate. So that's really nice. This is really not that good of a shop. So I'm not going to buy anything and just save my money. I bought the soul heart because soul hearts are always nice, but that's about it. I've been seeing this guy all day. He's like the worst, one of the worst bosses in the game. Okay, I'm gonna drop the stuff from the box over here and go into Devil Deal first. Okay. Uh, Karma is actually not that good. Neither is the other thing. So I'm gonna take my Emperor and leave. I don't want to pop the pill because it can actually screw me out of the Emperor card. I don't want that to happen. Okay, I'm gonna. Oops. I'm gonna take half a heart here on purpose because it puts me to half to half a red heart, which is gonna be nice with the polar right later. All right. Whoops! Whoops! I grabbed the heart on accident, but that's fine. We're gonna pass the donation machine on the way back, actually. Oh, so that's nice. I'm gonna get the soul heart and that sack head there. Sack is the one that makes so many, the, the all the sacks drop again. All right. So like I said, I'm gonna hit myself there, again on purpose. I don't need the money anymore, so I can just leave and leave it behind. But half a heart means that the Polaroid that I'm picking up after this floor is gonna proc. Basically, when you're at half a heart, half a red heart or less, and you get hit, you get a five-second invincibility shield from the Polaroid, and you want to be be able to take that. Sure. You want to be able to have that because a five-second invincibility shield is, of course, really good. I got cancer there, um, which is actually a good thing, getting cancer and ice axe is always a good thing. Um, cancer just gives me three blue hearts and makes it so every damage is cut in half that I take after the first hit of a room. Okay, oh god, I got placenta, I totally forgot. Okay, I didn't get anything worth noting there, and this is also really bad, so we're just gonna move on.
Okay, I still want to check the cards because there's cards that reveal the whole uh, the whole map for me. So I want to see if I get one of those. Because that would obviously speed up the run. Not going all the wrong ways would also speed up the run. But it seems to be something I have trouble to do today. Okay, okay I want to grab the keys. Because I need four. Like the last times. Joker card is going to take me to the Devil deal. But I mean, I want to keep the Emperor, so I might as well use the Joker right now. Oh, oh we have everything, okay. Okay, this is really good, actually. Okay. So the Dark Matter that we picked up first is just plus one damage and fear shots. Uh, and the Abaddon is... It gives you a bunch of stats, most notably speed and damage. And uh, it gives you also um, six black hearts and takes away all red heart containers. So it's basically a, a really big health boost that I got there right off the... Right towards the end, which is nice. Abaddon is really one of those items you want to find late game because it just gives you so much health. Okay, Fistula is gonna get wrecked by, by Succubus. <laughs> or Teratoma. Okay, that's the cheers up, that's nice. And I'm just gonna leave. Because I wasn't the devil deal already from the Joker card, I don't need to check again. And yeah, I'm like really good on health right now. everyone in Womb and onwards does a full heart of damage, it doesn't really matter if you have a half heart or a full heart. Like, it's basically the same thing, since everyone does a full heart anyway. I have Cancer, which halves my damage I take, so I guess it's an issue. But... It's oh, damn it. Just have to press the button here. Obviously not really that big whoops. Not that big of a deal pressing a button when you have flight. Like the spikes can't really do anything to you. Uh, these red guys actually die once you kill every other enemy on the on the in the room. So you wouldn't just clear the, the other enemies. Okay. Uh, like said earlier, if I stay close to that succubus, I'm gonna get a 1.5 times damage multiplier. So I want to try and stand close to him, which sometimes makes for really weird fights because obviously I can't follow him there because mom was firing or mom's heart rather. But yeah. All right. If I just could not pull clear every single floor, that would be a really nice game. <laughs> uh, luckily, like I said, we have the Emperor card for the, for the chest, so we can just skip the entire floor and go straight to the boss. Unless we get Curse of the Maze. Curse of the Maze sometimes cheats you out of your cards, but I just hope that's not going to happen. Okay, so Cubus is going to do work again here against Fistula. Damn it. You see, this is really unfortunate. This is where mapping would come in, like, big time, obviously. Because I would just know where to go. Okay, uh, I'm running out of bombs here slowly, so I gotta... I need to start considering whether I want to bomb through rooms or not. First... Okay, I can use the Succubus to, to get my damage multiplier again here. 
and then we just go and fight Isaac. So I want to stay close to this guy, like I said, because I get the multiplier. It's not always possible, but I also don't mind taking hit as much with this health, so... Alright, I'm not gonna have the book for the blue baby fight because, like I said, I'm gonna be teleporting there directly, but that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> okay, this is soy milk. This is actually a really bad item, but, like, it's basically a massive tears up, but also a massive damage down. Uh, it's normally really bad, but it's like, it, it didn't really matter at that point. And it's, it's kind of a fan favorite, if I wanna say that. We basically just cleared the boss with that. Now I also got bouncy tears, which makes my tears bounce around, which is really hard to see with these little tears, but yeah. I'm 51, I could be done, damn. So yeah, we move on to Isaac. Isaac is actually probably the most interesting character of the run. Uh, he starts with the D6, which allows you to reroll item pedestals, which actually puts like a whole new level of um, of strategy to the run because you got to decide when to roll and what not to and like how to manage your rolls and all and so it's actually pretty interesting isaac also usually gets very powerful builds of course because you have more more ways to choose what items to take and to get new ones basically so yeah Uh, we started Chocolate Milk there, which lets me start Jots. Uh, chocolate Milk is really good. I like it a lot. Like, a fully charged tier does four times your damage. And the nice thing about Chocolate Milk is that you can basically just, uh, like, customize your shots. You know, like, you always charge it as much as you need to. Oh, wow. Okay, Cricket's Head is a 1.5 times damage multiplier, which is one of the head-based items that I said can come out of Golden Chest. Font, okay. Alright, Bell does a speed up. And we get Red Chests. Red Chests aren't that big of a deal on Isaac because of something you can do on Angel Rooms. I actually want Angel Rooms because it would be really nice to show uh, what you can do in those actually with a D6. But yeah, uh, we'll have to see if it works out. Okay, batteries, of course, insanely powerful with the D6. If I want to spend the time or if my run is not that good, I can just walk back and forth between, like, item rooms and stuff uh, to grab the batteries and keep rolling. I'll, I'll have to decide if I want to do that, but we'll see. Okay, this is the boss, so I'm probably not going to be walking back. Boss rooms tend to give you a lot of damage and tears ups, like a lot of DPS, too. And that battery is not too far away, so I might invest the time, but it depends on what drops here now and if there's Devil Deal and all. Uh, okay, there is actually an Angel Room, which is nice, uh, because what you can do is you can blow up the Angel, and he starts attacking you, uh, and it's actually meant... Like, you are actually meant to do that to get to a secret boss in the game. Like, the Angel drops a key piece, and if you can, if you can get two key pieces, as in kill two Angels, you can uh, go to the secret boss. But with Isaac, you can... Oh, wow. Uh, with Isaac, you can just re-roll the key piece uh, into an Angel Room item, and that's really nice. So we got Sacred Heart here, which is actually one of the, the three best items of the Angel Pool. Uh, Sacred Heart is a 2.3 times damage. It's actually the highest damage multiplier in the game, 2.3 times. So this is really nice. We have really massive tiers now, basically. And uh, we got Holy Shot as well, which sometimes which sometimes makes you fire shiny tears and they make a beam of light spawn. But, yeah. I mean, I, I can't see chat right now, but I can only imagine there's a bunch of my 
my RNG emotes flying. I'm kind of there's kind of this fad in the community where everyone says I have the best RNG all of everyone out of everyone. And I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, holy shot basically is this. Like if you get one of those holy, holy shots randomly and they hit, you get a beam of light to it, and they actually do a lot of damage. I still have time to get Godhead, don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna see what that card is. If that's an Emperor, this is gonna be a really fast run, damn it. Oh wow. Okay, Mace put me in a nice spot there. Made me skip a room basically. That's nice. Okay, there's a battery there which I might be able to abuse. Like, I'm definitely abusing that battery if I can. Obviously, just sitting there. Might as well. Okay, this is bad. This is really good. And I'm gonna go grab the battery and go to the next floor. Road Rage is a 0.6 speed up. Like, it's really a lot. Like, the maximum speed is plus 1 and Road Rage is 0.6. And, like, as you can see, I'm moving a lot faster here. Uh, I'm playing this thing three times in hopes of getting a crystal ball. Which I didn't, sadly, but worth a shot and I'm probably not gonna use the I'm probably not gonna use the coins for anything else. Damn it. Okay, if you overshot these guys by enough they don't even spawn flies. So you wanna try and do that to poop. Alright. Oh damn it. Okay. This is kind of an, an annoying room. It's a lot of batteries. Okay. Like on the past few runs, I'm gonna go into the shop and see if I can get uh, greed. But I didn't. Okay, Gish is gonna spawn Little Gish again, uh, which I don't want. Like I said, I just don't like the slowdown tiers. So I might reroll here, depending on whether I get an Angel Room or not. Okay, we can still get really good items here. Like uh, once again, we're fighting the Angel again to get the key piece, uh, and and then just roll twice. Oh no. Okay, we got a sensor and and the spear. Uh, which are both not that good. I don't know. There's a, a few guys that think the spear is really good. It's basically a melee weapon that does a lot of damage and is really inconvenient to use, in my opinion. And the sensor has this beam of light around it and slows down everything that's inside it. Like, it's a really nice defensive item. Like I said, the angel room is really defensive. It's not really what I was hoping for, but... You know. I could have gone to Mega Satan this run. I don't know. Depending on what time I'm at, when I reach Womb 2, I might go to Hush. Actually, we, we can do that. We can go to the Lamb on this last run, I think. I think that would be really nice. So yeah, basically you've seen me, you've seen me go up to the Cathedral six runs now. Uh, and I've, I've been going on about how there's an alternate ending, like there's different paths, so why don't we do that? So we're gonna grab the the negative this time and actually take the, the alternate route. Guardian Angel. Okay. I could clear the boss rush, but that would be really annoying. I'm actually gonna get that though. Uh, it gives me large tears, which are nice. Like, they, they look nice, and they have a bigger hitbox, so they're pretty convenient to use as well. Okay, I need to remember. You guys need to shout, um... Shoal when I'm on Mom's heart. <laughs> because I'm totally gonna forget about it. Like, I do this so often on stream too, where I take the negative. 
but like you're so used to going to the cathedral <laughs> that that you just completely forget about it. Like you just autopilot on the mom's hard fight and go the wrong way. Like, normally on a 7 character speedrun, you're supposed to take the same path 7 times, but I mean, it's marathon, right? We can show off one of the other endings. And I mean, the dark room is actually significantly harder than the chest. So I guess it's nicer to watch, too. Two of hearts is eh. Two of hearts doubles my heart, my red hearts, so I mean if I ever fall down to two red hearts, I guess I can use that. I don't have an article right now, so I might as well keep it, but you don't really need it. Or like I shouldn't need it. Okay, so we can try and get close and use the spear against these guys, but it's got a really weird hitbox. Got a halo. These guys are annoying because like you can't kill them in one shot, they always turn into turrets. And turrets are amongst the most annoying enemies in the game. <laughs> oh. Wait, what? Oh, there's hands. Alright. Oh damn it! <laughs> if you get grabbed by those hands, they're they're wall masters. They're basically a, a Zelda reference too. Like if you get grabbed by them, they take you back to the starting room. I usually don't fight these guys because because you, you like once you hear them, once you hear they're in a room, you basically just skip the room because it takes forever for them to drop down. But like I didn't realize it was a room with wall masters when I walked in. Hush. What time is it? Oh god, we got a half hour. Yeah, but we're behind schedule, I don't know. Ah, uh, fuck it. We're gonna clear... <laughs> we're gonna clear the extra boss real quick, too. It's not a big of a deal. Okay. Why did I come here? So this is actually another alternate ending that you that we got in the the expansion and it features a boss called Hush. Now Hush is uh, quite a bit different from all the bosses we've seen so far. First of all, he spawns a blue baby fight on you for some reason. Like nobody knows why this fight is here, but it's here. And it's really I mean, I don't know. It's just basically the same blue baby fight we had the last the last uh, runs. But yeah, after that, Hush spawns, and uh, he's kind of interesting in that his health scales with your damage. Like, it's one of the two bosses that did that in this game. Um, damn it. He's one of the two bosses that did that in this game, uh, next to uh, a boss in another game mode, actually, that we didn't play today. Uh, but yeah, he basically reads your DPS and adjusts his health accordingly, and as you can see, like, his health goes down really slowly. Um, but... This was a, this used to be a lot worse actually. Like his his health scaling was so much worse before. So basically, you, you can't really do a lot about him uh, except for like firing at him, and he he turns the whole room into a massive bullet hell. And uh, I mean, this is not actually bad yet, but it's gonna get bad. And he also spawns these flies on you, which for some reason, right after they spawn, they're unkillable. So you basically, just want to avoid them for a while before you kill them. Sensor is helping a lot here, of course, because it slows down all the tears that get close to me. 
Didn't think I'd ever say that, but the sensor is actually doing work here. Okay. Now he fires these continuum shots, which, like, go around the map and... Like, they, they go off on the left and come back on the right, basically, if that makes sense. But there's, like, safe spots that you just have to find, then you stay there and you're good. Okay, there's more flies. Another one of those. Oh, damn it. So we basically just keep firing at him while he does this. As soon as you find a safe spot, it's really just a matter of firing at him and playing the patience game with him. Okay. Um, also, since we're in Mom's womb, there's a there's a familiar in this game that we haven't encountered this this run. Which is brother Bobby, which is kind of a, a blue little guy that looks a little bit like Hush. And it's kind of speculated that since we're in Mom's womb, this might actually be Isaac's brother that he never wanted. And we're basically performing an abortion here. Uh, just a quote-unquote fun fact. I don't know if it was that fun for you guys, but... It's probably Woodface flying in chat right now, but... This is just this game in a nutshell, basically. Okay, you could really pop up now so I can attack you again, hush. Damn it. Okay, so he's almost dead, and then we're gonna go to Shoal. Uh, basically, after hush, the game continues as usual. Like, you can either go to the Cathedral or to Shoal. And that's that. And she's dead. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that happened. So the game gave me an ending there for some reason, so I guess that's that time. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Normally, you're supposed to be able to go down to Shoal, but it didn't do that for some reason. I guess we can end here then. What time was that? 2.07? <laughs> yeah, that was... Normally, you get a trapdoor and a, and a beam of light, like, after, after Mom's Heart. I didn't know why I did it, but... Yeah. That was Finding of Isaac Afterbirth, and after this is actually what's next. Alright. Yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have fun with the rest of the marathon.